An airplane travels horizontally at a speed of 500 miles per hour at an altitude of 3 miles above the ground. An observer sees the plane flying toward him at an angle of elevation of 60 degrees. Find a rate at which the angle of elevation is changing at this instant. So let's begin with a picture. So let's say this is the ground and here is the observer. And here's the plane. It's flying towards the observer and it's at an altitude of three miles above the ground. So this is the angle of elevation, theta. And the plane is traveling forward at a speed of 500 miles per hour. We need to determine the rate at which the angle of elevation is changing at this instant. So that is d theta dt. That's what we need to determine. So let's call this y, x, and z. Now what else do we know? So we have the value of y. y is equal to 3 in miles. We don't know the value of x, but we do know the rate at which x is changing. So is x increasing or decreasing? Notice that as the plane travels towards the person, x is decreasing. Therefore, dx dt is negative 500 miles per hour. Now there's one more piece of information that we know, and that is that theta is 60 degrees. So to conserve space, let me get rid of some stuff. So keep in mind, we're looking for d theta dt. Now the only picture that we really need is basically a right triangle for this problem. Now from this picture, how can we calculate x? We don't have anything with z. We don't know what z or dz dt is. We have theta and we have y. How can we calculate x? So notice that tangent theta based on Sokotoa is equal to the opposite side y divided by the adjacent side, which is x. x is adjacent or next to theta. z is the hypotenuse. So tangent of 60 degrees, theta is 60, is equal to 3 divided by x. Now let's cross multiply. So this is going to be 3 and that's equal to x times tan 60. Tangent of 60 degrees is the square root of 3. You could type that in your calculator, make sure it's in degree mode. If you don't have access to a calculator, you need to be familiar with the 30, 60, 90 triangle. Across the 30 is 1, across the 60 is root 3, across the 90 is 2. So tangent 60 will be opposite divided by the adjacent side. So root 3 over 1, which is the square root of 3. So it's good to know the 30, 60, 90 reference triangle and the 45, 45, 90 reference triangle. So now let's divide both sides by the square root of 3. So x is equal to 3 divided by the square root of 3. So if we rationalize it, So the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 9, which is 3. And 3 divided by 3 is 1. So x is equal to the square root of 3. Now that we have the value of x, how can we calculate d theta dt? Looking at the information that we have, we don't have anything dealing with z. So it doesn't make sense to use z squared equals x squared plus y squared. The only equation that relates x, y, and theta is the tangent equation that we had before. So let's go back to that one. Tangent theta 
is equal to y over x. Now, it's important to understand that x is a variable, but y is a constant. As the plane travels toward the observer, it will remain at an altitude of 3. Therefore, y is not going to change. The plane is flying horizontally, so the altitude will always be 3 miles. So y is constant. So I'm going to rewrite this expression as the constant times the variable. Now, before I take the derivative of this expression, I still need to rewrite it. 1 over x is the same as x to the minus 1. Now, in this form, I'm going to differentiate both sides with respect to time. The derivative of tangent is secant squared times theta, or secant squared of theta. And the derivative of the angle theta is going to be d theta dt. Now, to differentiate this expression, we need to use the constant multiple rule. So the constant is y, we can rewrite that, times the derivative of x to the minus 1. So now we need to use the power rule. It's going to be negative 1 x to the negative 2, and then times dx dt. Now, secant is 1 divided by cosine. So secant squared is 1 over cosine squared. And here we have negative y. I'm going to move the x to the bottom. So it's going to go from x to the negative 2 and change to x to the positive 2. And then times dx over dt. So theta is 60. Therefore, this is going to be cosine of 60 degrees, but let's not forget to square it, times d theta over dt. Now, we know that y is equal to 3, and x is the square root of 3, and then times dx dt, which is negative 500. So now, what is cosine of 60? So let's go back to the 30, 60, 90 triangle. So we said across the 30 was a 1, across the 60 is the square root of 3, across the 90 is 2. Now don't forget about Soka Toa. So let's use the cob part in Soka Toa. So cosine of 60 degrees is going to be the adjacent side, that's A, divided by the hypotenuse. Adjacent to 60 is 1, and the hypotenuse is across the box, so that's 2. Therefore, cosine of 60 degrees is one half. So this is going to be one divided by one half squared times d theta over dt. And that's equal to negative three. And the square root of three squared, the square root and the, the exponent will cancel. Or you could see it as three squared is nine and the square root of nine is three. So that becomes 3. Now going back to the left side, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4. So we have 1 over 1 fourth times d theta over dt. Negative 3 divided by 3 is negative 1, and negative 1 times negative 500 is positive 500. Now, what is 1 divided by 1 over 4? To simplify that complex fraction, multiply the top and the bottom by 4. So 4 times 1 is 4, and then 4 times 1 fourth, the 4s will cancel, and so you just get 1 on the bottom. And so 4 divided by 1 is just 4. So we have 4 times d theta dt, and that's equal to 500. Dividing both sides by 4, 500 divided by 4 is 125. Now, what are the units for d theta dt? Theta is going to be in radians, unless specified otherwise. And time, we can see that time is in hours. So it's going to be radians per hour. So that's the rate at which the angle is changing per hour. Let's say if you want it in seconds, here's what you can do. 
So start with what you're given, 125 radians per hour. And convert to minutes first. One hour is equal to 60 minutes. And then convert to seconds. So one minute is equal to 60 seconds. Do it in such a way that the unit hours will cancel and the unit minutes will cancel as well. So we're left with radians per second, if you ever need to change it. So it's going to be 125 divided by 60, divided by 60 again. So it's going to be a very small number if you want it in radians per second. So it's 0 0.0347 radians per second. If you want it in radians per minute, just focus on this portion. So it will be 125 over 60. And so you can say d theta dt is in it's equal to 2.083 radians per minute. So you can report your answer in any one of these uh, units. But for the most part, since the speed is in miles per hour, you probably want the, the final answer to be in radians per hour. You want the time to match, which is usually the case.